The Italian Radio Hour is sponsored by Istituto Mondo Italiano. Buonasera a tutti, good evening and welcome to the Italian Radio Hour. Io sono Stefano. E io sono Viviana. Come stai stasera Stefano? Uh, non c'è male, non c'è male. E tu, come stai? Benissimo, benissimo. All right. Well, we are back for another episode. And uh, as always, we'd like to welcome our regular listeners. And, and now that we've been doing this a little while, we can say we have regular listeners. We'd also like to welcome any new listeners and anyone listening online at khbradio.com. Also, be sure to like us on Instagram and Facebook at the Italian Radio Hour. E benvenuti a tutti i nostri ascoltatori da tutto il mondo. Grande, grazie per essere con noi anche oggi, mentre continuiamo questo nostro viaggio per l'Italia e nella cultura um, italiana. Brava. And uh, as everyone uh, is joining us, remembers in our last episode, we had a couple of couples on there. One, you know, kind of does the tours and, you know, and had some marche. very... See, mm-hmm. and then uh, we had um, Antonella and Sean. And again, kind of two stories, uh, two people that, uh, you know, um, just different meeting in completely different environments, but they're still together. They're great love stories. Um, but I think what most people care about is they want to know, uh, I think they use old saying, the phrase that pays. So you asked about chi dorme non pigli pesci. Cosa significa? Okay, so chi dorme non piglia pesci, and I actually put a little picture on our Facebook page, is who sleeps doesn't catch the fish. So pretty much you have something similar in English. Obviously, if you're sleeping, you won't be able <laughs> to catch the fishes. So right. the early bird catch gets the worm. the worm. Yep. Yes. All right. Fantastic. Okay. So I think we're ready to dive in into our guests, but uh, first, a little pubblicità. Parli italiano? Do you want to learn, improve, or master your Italian? Istituto Mondo Italiano can help. Located in the heart of Regent Square, Mondo Italiano offers small group classes and one-on-one private tutoring to help you learn Italian in no time. Visit us online at www.istitutomondoitaliano.org. Rizzo's Malabar Inn is an Italian restaurant located in Crabtree, PA. It has been owned and operated by the DeFabo family through five generations. Since opening in 1935, Rizzo's has become a renowned local landmark of Westmoreland County. Along with a restaurant, banquet, and wedding venue, there are also a full-service catering business. In addition, Rizzo's Malabar Inn operates a successful line of Italian retail products, including homemade jarred pasta sauce, frozen pastas, and soups such as gnocchi, cavatelli, ravioli, wedding soup, and pasta fagioli. Look for these Rizzo's Malabar Inn products and more in your local grocery store. Well, welcome back to our listeners. And I am super excited for, I'm always excited about our <laughs> guests, but we, I'm very, very honored to introduce Tony Marotta from Radio Italia Cleveland. Um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit, I uh, will talk a lot about how Tony has been promoting the Italian music in the, um, in the American scene, so to speak, um, since I believe 2008. Tony, are you with us? Ciao Viviane e Stefano, come state stasera? Benissimo, benissimo. You can recognize the radio voice, right? He's got it. He's got the it. <laughs> so, uh, just a, a little better introduction about uh, uh, Tony, who has been broadcasting his uh, Radio Italia show, a program featuring an incredible variety of Italian music from ageless Neapolitan classics to Italian opera to the sounds of modern rock and pop. So, Tony, um, let's. Uh, the the first question is usually to link you back to Italy. So we're going to. I'm going to ask you if you can just uh, tell us a little bit about maybe where your family is from, and then eventually we're going to dive into your career with the radio station. Prima cosa, vorrei dire che sono molto felice e grato di essere vostro ospite questa sera, e vorrei inviare. I miei migliori auguri a tutti i vostri ascoltatori, anche, mi scuse in anticipo per questo brutto tempo che stiamo per mandare. So, with that, as Roberto Benigni said at the Academy Awards, this is terrible. I've used up all my English, so I've used up all my Italian. Uh, Viviana, my family is uh, from uh, the very central part, although it's considered southern Italy, 
of Molise mm-hmm. in uh, Provincia Isernia yeah. mm-hmm. to uh, break it down and make it uh, even more specific to your listeners who might be very familiar with that area. They are from a, a, a comune uh, called Rionero Sanitico, and that's where my mother and my father were both actually uh, born. Actually, to be more specific, they were from these tiny little villages called Frazione. My mom from Casabona, I think it's all of eight houses, and my dad from Castiglione, which no longer exists. I think an earthquake in 1976 knocked it down the remaining uh, half dozen Mm. homes or so. So that is where they're from, and uh, when they immigrated, they uh, settled here in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, and this was where I was born. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. And uh, so we're going to fast forward to, uh, I think, 2008, at least that is the date that I was able to find in my research. Uh, mm-hmm. You decided that um, you're, you were going to transmit uh, this uh, passion that you had for um, Italian music and, um, uh, and propose it to the American audience, but go way beyond what would have been, you know, the Frank Sinatra's and, 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 and so forth. So can you tell us a little bit about what type of music um, can we expect to hear on any given um, show of uh, Radio Italia? I'll be happy to do that, Vivian. Actually, we go back even a little bit further than that. For about three years, we were... Um Broadcasting at, uh, you can call it a commercial radio station, WKTX, AM830, which was located in the northeastern Ohio area. Uh, it was a small 1,000-watt station, and uh, it was since it was public, I had to come up with, of course, advertising to fund the program for three years, and that's when we were lucky enough to land where we're at now at WRUWFM 91.1 on the campus of Case Western Reserve University, where we've been there, uh, yeah, since about 2008. So we're coming up here shortly on our 14th anniversary. Been broadcasting for 17 years, though. Uh, in terms of what we do at Radio Italia, I, I really can't tell you uh, too much other than it's just uh, about four or six hours before the show when I start to select this uh, potpourri of uh, beautiful Italian music. And yeah, as you kind of alluded to, um, my job is to help the listener, whether they be Italian, whether they be anything other than Italian, sort of come to understand uh, how broad this beautiful thing called Italian music is. And it's not unusual, as you've listened to me quite frequently, uh, to uh, schedule on the show a wide, wide tapestry of music. I pay homage, certainly, to uh, folklore music. I always begin every show, as I have for the last 17 years, with a beautiful folklore number. And then I start to just go in different directions. Blues, perhaps. Maybe Italian jazz. Uh, maybe Italian opera. Uh, perhaps Italian instrumental music. Uh, Italian pop. Italian hard rock. Uh, Italian techno music. I, there's no knowing exactly where I'm going to go. I just start uh, reaching into my database of music, Viviana, which is probably, conservatively speaking at this point, about 5,000 albums, and uh, multiply that by an average of, what, 10 tracks per album. So when your database is as large as 50,000 songs, there's uh, never for a lack of music. So uh, we just try to... Uh, Entertain. We try to entertain more than anything else, uh, you know, our listeners. And as you notice, I'm I'm American born, so my Italian is adequate. I like to think that it's schivo uh, most times, but uh, when uh, when I can, uh, you know, I'll I'll take and I'll uh, try to converse a little bit in Italian. But the more important thing that I think you've noticed that I'll do is I'll take and I'll give. Uh, very valuable, I think, valuable information about the particular song that I'm playing, such as the artist that's performing it, a little bit of information about the artist, and information about the song itself, whether it's an original or whether it's a cover. And uh, I just try to make it a learning experience. In my heart, deep down, just like you, Viviana, I'm an instructor. I'm a, I'm, I'm a teacher. I do adult education. been doing that for 25 years now. So I hope that comes out when somebody, you know, tunes in to Radio Italia di Cleveland. Tony, a question. 
So obviously the way the radio business operates now is very different when you started. You know, everything's kind of moved to streaming, but yet obviously yep. we're broadcasting live. You have this kind of eclectic mix of, of Italian music. If people want to follow, is it as simple as can we follow you online? I, mean, I don't, Obviously I don't have to be in Cleveland. So what? how can people follow you and hear this kind of well, music? That's a great question, and um, yes, things have taken a change drastically as to how, um, not just Italian music, but just how anything is, uh, you know, information music uh, is disseminated, and uh, Terrestrial Stations is the name of a, uh, a genuine bona fide radio station with call letters and a radio frequency. Uh, but most of my peers, most of my colleagues, you included, well, at least I think, or actually you are on a frequency, I, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, we are broadcasting some, live. Some, right. Some of my other uh, colleagues, though, have moved to this podcasting uh, phenomena that's been around for a little bit, and they seem to have found it to be a little less constricting, a little bit more to their liking. That way they're not stuck to, all right, I'm on at 5, and I better be off at 5.59 and 59 seconds, you know, that kind of thing there. So, um, you know, people can listen to my radio show. If you're here in the northeastern Ohio area, and WRUW has a very strong frequency, uh, we're, we're at 15,000 watts, which is unheard of uh, for a college radio station. So we, we have a an elliptical sphere, if you will, uh, range that we can reach that uh, certainly is a neighborhood of at least uh, a couple million uh, listeners when you take into account, you know, the northeastern greater metropolitan area and some of the communities east and west of Cleveland. We don't go that far south because of another radio station that shares our frequency, but, you know, for the local airwave, 91.1, that's how a lot of people will listen to us. But then, then... <laughs> The ability to now uh, live stream. We have a, an IP tracker, Stefano, at the station that keeps track of where people are listening from. And it's not unusual for me to take a look in the middle of my show and see that there's people listening in from England, people listening from uh, parts way out west in the United States, from South America, from South Africa, from Australia, from uh, the, uh, you know, the... Uh, European mainland uh, from Asia, Japan, it, it's, it, it's, it, it's incredible. With the advent of, of the ability to, to live stream now, uh, you, you know, you can listen live from anywhere. And then I am part of a consortium, and I want to welcome you and Viviana to it as well, too, the Ciao USA Radio Italia That's family. Fantastic. Indeed, and we're on we there. Are. We are. <laughs> Loving it. And, and, and it's wonderful because, you know, Rio, the, who's in charge of it, had a vision a few years back, and it's grown immensely. And we're also sort of tied in with Grand Angolari up in Canada, which is a, an electronic uh, weekly uh, news publication that uh, as soon as you reach out to Ernesto Paolo, he'd be more than glad to take and uh, you know, put your little logo on there and make it a, a clickable link. And then they have a subscription base. And not even subscription, I think they have just people that you know, will take and click on their link to read their publication in the millions. Millions. Wow. They've estimated between three and four million. That's a lot more than who listens to me now, besides my mom and some of my relatives. So, uh, you know, it's it's great to know that uh, that through, um, you know, through different, um, you know, I. I I, I don't want to call it necessarily uh, what's what's sort of syndication, but you know something to that effect that that we can reach more people than than ever before. So and 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 because it's an archive, you can take and call up any show that you want from the last three years or so, and listen to it again. And then we ought to also utilize this one other thing, which is called Spinatron, which is an electronic playlist. And with that, uh, if you want, you can uh, read and actually see what song I'm playing, who the artist is, what recording it's from, the year that it was released, the label, and stuff like that. So if you want to pursue that artist further, boom, we've achieved what I've wanted to do in the very beginning, and that is to take and educate our listeners to expose them to new uh, music. Now, having said that, that is a perfect segue into the next question, because we're fairly new at this, and for now, we're going to say you're probably our most famous guest. But who are some of the, the famous, you know, famous musicians? Who, who are some of the folks you've had on the show? 
Well, you know what? We have been very fortunate. I have rubbed shoulders, and Viviana has seen the pictures with, with people that you can't rub shoulders with anymore because they're no longer with us. Meeting Pino Daniele oh. was an incredible experience. That was all made possible through Massimo Galotta, a dear friend of mine who is a uh, promoter uh, out in uh, the uh, New York City area, as well as out of Rome, I believe, is where he has another office. And I uh, said, Tony, want to come to New York? I'll uh, hook you up with Pino. And uh, I took a, a picture with him that will, that, that will stay with me forever. Uh, Zucro came Zucro, twice to Cleveland. Yes, I have that the, glamorous uh, picture myself. <laughs> uh, that's right. The, through, the, uh, through the wonderful um, you know, uh, efforts of Ron Onesti, a very, mm-hmm. very uh, famous uh, Italian-American uh, youngster about our age, maybe a little younger, mm-hmm. Who operates out of the Chicago area? Uh, we have interviewed Biagio Antonacci, and of course, I need help with that interview. So, when Patrizia was a part of my show for a couple of years back in 2000, uh, gosh, maybe 11 and 12, she had the opportunity of interviewing him. I've interviewed personally myself, Eduardo Benato, who is quite a character. Mamma mia. He 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 he's maybe five foot tall, but he looks like a giant on stage. We've uh, we've we've interviewed Grazia Di Michele, Eugenio Fenardi, who's Stefano, a person that you can interview because his mother was American, so he speaks English without any hint of an Italian accent, and then he speaks Italian without any hint of an English accent. Uh, who else have we? Uh, well, for the record, we've I speak Italian without uh, any uh, audio Italian due, accent. Two very talented young men uh, from Naples who wrote. Uh, a lot of music for Mina, uh, and, and then people uh, a tier below that who aren't maybe signed to a label, uh, but are just, uh, you know, are talented in their own right. And uh, Viviana has gotten to meet uh, two very, very special, very beautiful, wonderful people who came from Venice a few years back to grace us with their presence, and I was able to put together... Uh, an arrangement along with the help of Viviana to take them to, because uh, I think they were here for about 18 days or so, taking them on a little whirlwind tour of the Midwestern uh, United States. Mm-hmm. We snuck in the falls, too, which they kind of <laughs> dug a lot. And um, so I, I, I'm open to really anything. Uh, it's, uh, I, I'm not a promoter. I have a day job. <laughs> Radio that I do here, I do strictly because it's something that I enjoy doing. I, I volunteer my time to the radio station. When an opportunity presents itself where I can bring entertainment to the Cleveland area and maybe have it spill over nearby two hours to the east of me in Pittsburgh, then, you know, I'll, uh, I'll work with Viviana or whoever, you know, t- to make it happen. I had the opportunity to do just that with a three-piece group called Mary Lou, three Sicilian uh, young men. Uh, from Caltanissetta, I think is where they're from. And they just happened to be in New York for a week. And uh, they knew that I was playing their music, you know, over the years. And I said, you know, you want to come to Cleveland, home of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? And they said, well, I'll tell you what, if you pay our bus fare, a Greyhound bus fare from, uh, I think they were in Manhattan to Cleveland and back, we'll come. I said, I'll make you a deal. You want to work? <laughs> Meaning, okay, these three days that you're here, Can you play and perform? They said, sure. And you know what? Through the grace of God and no other reason, we were able to get them gigs for three consecutive nights here. I mean, it was crazy. They came in Friday evening at 4. They were on stage midnight Friday night. They played Saturday night. They played Sunday night. They were back at the bus station Sunday at midnight to go back to New York. And it was just an incredible whirlwind type of uh, situation where uh, it, it, it fell on my lap. Yep. So when it falls in my lap and it doesn't require <laughs> too many Ben Franklins, uh, if you know what I'm saying, <laughs> then I'm happy to do it, and and uh, and it brings me such great joy. I mean, you, what, what I've told Viviana, and I'll tell you too, Stefano, is that the, the smaller the artist, the more grateful they mm-hmm. are, okay? Because the big artists like Zucro, when he came here, and some of the others that I've seen, like Premier de Fornidia in, Ch- in Chicago, uh, you know, remember, those those are top acts that are signed by labels that, you know, have a lot of money invested in these uh, artists. And so, you know, they take in, they make possible, you know, a, a full-blown tour. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it's just a person that pays out of their own pocket to come to the United States to see this maniac in Cleveland, Ohio, who won't <laughs> stop playing their music, you know, then, then you know, I, I do the very best I can to make it as enriching culturally 
as well as make it, you know, financially so they don't have to take a bath, put it that way and stuff. So and that's I think kind that, of how I roll, if that and, makes sense. Yes, <laughs> and I think that's uh, that's re- really your 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 specialty, um, you know, finding new to scene musicians and, and bands that are not uh, well known. And uh, I've been uh, on the um, lucky end of uh, the receiving end of that phone call sometimes when you have this opportunity mm-hmm. because Pittsburgh and Cleveland are only two hours away and through Correct. Istituto Mondo Italiano, we can just indeed have the opportunity to showcase the talent that you have um, spotted that has come to Cleveland, to um, Pittsburgh. So that indeed has been a, already a, a well-oiled uh, partnership, so, um, so to speak. May I ask you how many CDs or records um, are in your private collection. Now, my private collection, I'm looking at three shelves that each one hold. Let's see, there's 40 that go across, and then there's 10 rows, so that's 400, that's 800. That one over there, not quite full, maybe about 1,000. That's my personal collection. It's the one that, you know, Connie lets me buy CDs uh, under controlled circumstances. Okay, I have to take and uh, allow her to, you know, to buy jewelry or fancy stuff like that for her <laughs> to let me buy some CDs. And I'm expecting a big shipment of 20 of them coming from Italy very soon. But in terms of my overall library for the uh, for the radio station, as I said, we're probably in the neighborhood of about 5,000. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because, you know, some of the stuff that I play you know, not that I don't like it. I mean, it would be, I, I just have limited room. You I might have to start your own music here, museum. But, you know, <laughs> Connie is going to, I think, maybe, uh, well, she'll have a long discussion with me about that. Okay. It'll be the shelf for me. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to have a little publicita here, and then we'll come back to you with a little music trivia for you. Va bene. <laughs> Applying for dual citizenship, Need documents translated? Istituto Mondo Italiano provides certified translation and interpretation services in 20 different languages. Be sure to visit us at istitutomondoitaliano.org. Okay, so welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to Tony. And uh, so this is going to be probably a very easy music trivia for you. We're going to play... I don't know, 10 seconds, 15 seconds of this one track and see if you can recognize who the group is. Okay, so Tony, Tony. I was not able to hear it because uh, I'm not streaming the program live because I didn't want to create feedback. So I didn't hear it. So I, I don't know if there's a way for me to hear it uh, again uh, by maybe turning up uh, the the volume in the phone. Okay, uh, let's do it this what way. What does the technician say? Is that doable? Uh, no, not doable. Sh- so, <laughs> but I will bring the guests on without announcing. Wait a minute! Him. You, know, wait, you know what? I think <laughs> I heard enough. I think maybe is it is it. Is it Alaboara? And indeed, it is Alaboara. Ah, mm-hmm. <laughs> Anthony, Anthony Tadeo, are you with us? I am, yes. So we're playing a little, a little music trivia to uh, Tony, between Tony and Anthony tonight. I'm, I oh, hope that I'm going to. So I'm so very excited <laughs> to have Anthony Tadeo with us. Again, thanks through uh, Tony. Um, I got to meet Anthony, and uh, we will discuss all about, we'll talk about Alla Boara, but we're so thankful because of uh, Anthony's beautiful music had allowed us uh, to find a, a, an opening music and a closing music for the Italian Radio Hour that was indeed exactly what we were looking for. We, we did not want to go with the traditional... Da, 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 no, no, absolutely so, not. So thank absolutely. you. Grazie, Anthony. Thank you very much. Yeah. The music is fantastic and perfect. So um, I don't know whether it's Anthony or Tony. Um, can you tell us a little bit when you got to meet uh, the first time? Oh, I'd lo- hmm. I would love to hear Tony's take on this. Okay, all right. Well, let's see. Let's see if I can give a, a honest-to-goodness take. Um, how about if I say that maybe it was through David Bagdanani? Is that a possibility, oh, yeah. Anthony? 
I think that was part of it for sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. David is, uh, I'm not even sure how, how to explain him. I'd have to go to Facebook and bring up his account, but he's involved with the Italian culture uh, in terms of uh, music, I'm, I'm going to guess, and entertainment, and uh, very much so from a uh, more traditional um, approach as opposed to, you know, uh, promoting Maniskin and stuff like that, shall we say. So uh, I think he had mentioned something about this one Anthony uh, Taddeo, as you know, we used to say back uh, growing up in Maple Heights, <laughs> but I knew it and did a little investigation, reached out to you, we chatted, we had a, I, I mean, we talked, Anthony, how long did we talk that night? Quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was over an hour, Those I conversations. think. conversations. <laughs> and, 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 and I was just fascinated by, by what you do, and I'm going to finish up here by just saying, you go ahead and take over at this point, but I know that we finally did get to meet in person that evening that you performed down in the Tremont area, and uh, I brought my yeah. best friend uh, with me that evening, and we had just a, a fantastic time. We were enchanted by the group, impressed by the musicianship, by your dedication, the great people in your band, and uh, I'm looking forward to our next uh, encounter, Anthony. Well, As am I, Tony. Thanks so much. Uh, so just uh, just you, thank you very much, Tony. Just to give a proper introduction to um, Anthony Taddeo. So Anthony is the uh, composer and a drummer with a vision that has is the founder of this beautiful group Alla Boara that we will be bringing to Pittsburgh on March the nineteenth. We will tell you later how to get tickets. But where is Anthony's um, vision? He wanted to bring recognition and new life to Italy's diverse historic history of regional folk music. So um, coupled with modern arrangements, um, you, Anthony, are able to create sounds and emotions that are really one of a kind. But let's backtrack a little bit for our listeners that might not be familiar yet with uh, your development as um, as a composer and your ties to Italy. So let's, again, start from scratch, your ties to Italy, and then eventually um, take us through your development as a composer and this very unique uh, passion of yours. Sure. Well, thank you. That was a beautiful introduction. And, uh, yeah, well, so my dad is from Italy. I'm a first-generation Italian-American, and uh, growing up, I've always been extremely proud of my heritage um, and later in life, I became a professional musician, but I never really felt extremely um, tied to the music of Italy. It was something that I wanted, you know, it was something that I wanted to be tied to, but because I took such pride in my heritage as an Italian-American, but uh, I never really found anything that struck a chord with me. And when I was in college, um, in New York City, actually, I was doing research on world music, and we had to do a paper on a, any type of world music. And I was like, well, I've not really checked out Italian folk music before, so I wonder what that sounds like. And what I stumbled upon were these um, recordings from Alan Lomax. Mm -hmm. Alan Lomax is a famous ethnomusicologist, and uh, he did a six months he was in Italy in 1954, and he did all these recordings in these really remote areas all over Italy, from Sicily all the way up to Piemonte. And it was, it was like the stuff that I was finding in these recordings was so much more diverse and so much more beautiful than anything I'd ever heard. You know, we were making jokes just a second ago about not playing the... They had not having your intro music be like some kind of corny tarantella, right? Like that's the, unfortunately, that's what everyone thinks of mm -hmm. when they think Italian folk music. Or they think about the classical music. You know, they think about Andrea Bocelli or they think about, uh, you know, other classical musicians or op operatic singers. And to me, this was just something so raw and, and a music that was so much a part of the fabric of the people. Uh, it just like it enveloped everything that I love about Italian culture. Mm -hmm. And so that was uh, just a really cool light bulb moment for me. And then when I was in grad school from 2018 to 2020, I'd been studying this music on and off for the last 10 years. And my professor 
um, heard me talking about it, and I did one composition that was based on uh, one of the songs that I found. It was actually a part of that song that you were just playing to surprise Tony with. Mm-hmm. Um, and he heard that song, and he was like, you should really think about making this into something more than just a one-song tribute to Italian folk music. You should think about making this into a group. And so then by the end of my time there, I had composed 10 works for this group, and I called some of my closest friends, and we came together and made this group. And it's been going really well because of people like you guys that that really get the vision and get and get what we're going for. It's been it's been so fun. We've only been doing it for just a little gosh, just oh, just two years. We will be privileged uh, whenever you're going to come to Pittsburgh with uh, your group. And going back to the uh, uh, what um, Alan Lomax has left us, I would um, encourage everyone actually to go onto Facebook. Uh, there is indeed the Alan Lomax um, Facebook page that uh, L'anno più felice della mia vita, the happiest um, year of my mm. life from 1954 to 1955. And they are recreating um, contemporary... Uh, Uh, videos. Uh, maybe some of the pages of his book have been narrated now in Italian, and they have started to put in also interviews, um, like for instance, how they make um, bagpipes or the sound of certain instruments. There again, they are so ancestral. You just, uh, they're captivating. Yeah. They're magical. You're just, uh, um, I just couldn't get enough of it. And when I listen to your music, that's exactly it. It puts me in a type of zone and uh, that connects mm. me to to my land and I wanted actually for you mm. to tell our listeners um, the significance of the name of your group yeah that's a great question we get that a lot and to me I, I I'm the kind of person that I like to be very intentional about things that I do so you know I've been a side man for the last 12 years and I never wanted to really start a group on my own, but then when this opportunity came along, it felt like the first time I could really put my voice into this world where so much music is made all the time, and I finally felt like maybe I had something unique to offer. So that, with that intentionality, I try to take every part of this band with that type of intentionality. So even the name Ala Boara, what that signifies is it's to describe a type of uh, work song, one that's our type of uh, folk song that's used for work. And um, to me, I thought that just that just so well well represented the music of the people, um, the music of the average farmer, peasant, uh, field worker. Um, and I like that even in the name, we're kind of referring back to this music of the people instead of, and there's nothing wrong with uh, classical music or opera, but I, again, it's just we're, we so quickly think about those things when we think about Italian music that I wanted every facet of this group to kind of reflect back to and point to the folk music, the people, the music of the people. Um, well, that is also resonates so much with Italian culture because, like, if we look at different parts of Italy, and maybe you will be able to tell our listeners a little bit where you focus on on your current music and maybe what you're working on. But if we look at the rice fields in Piedmont, for instance, that is a very unique experience. Also, I would like to say a musical mm. genre of the uh, Le Mondine. So we had um, temporary workers that would go up from all over Italy to the rice fields uh, to work. And there was a lot of actually uh, women, uh, um, female work uh, force. And yeah. uh, we have to say that the working conditions were not the best. They all lived in these big, um, um, you know, dorms like uh, bunk beds um, with uh, very limited yeah. also um their food ratios was kind of limited in comparison to the amount of work that uh, the women were passing and uh, were spending in, in the field, uh, bent over under the sun and everything. And uh, there is this mm. beautiful film, um, Riso Amaro, Bitter Rice, um, that I would recommend anyone to, um, to watch. And uh, between a wanted um, 
to um, mitigate the um, physical fatigue, they started to create these chants that they're very musical and they really created a new musical genre just for the uh, in the rice fields. So indeed, wow. the music of the people, the working people, has always been uh, present um, in different parts of um, of Italy. Uh, Anthony, I want to. Yeah, I, go ahead. I was going to circle back to the to the band itself because I wanted I wanted yeah, I no, want to kind of tie this all together because you said you're first generation. Your dad comes from Italy, and but you've you've maintained this passion. But I want to I want to you know the band members that you chose besides being obviously close friends, people you knew. How I'm assuming they have this. We've listened to the music. We like the music. Clearly, the music has passion in it. How how do they relate to this? Tell me how the members tie into all this? I will say, I think what's been the most surprising thing to me, you know, I started writing this music, I started putting this together, just thinking like, well, this will be fun. You know, I enjoy this, it's like a, just a passion project. And then the more that people hear it, and this includes the people in the band, it feels like everyone resonates with it on a certain level. And I think what that, why that is, is because I think there's just an innate humanness to this music. Like, it's such a, a part of the human experience that even when you can't understand what they're saying, it's something about it resonates because there's a, there's a realness to it. There's, like I said, there's that human element that I think is just inescapable, even though it's in these dialects that people don't understand. I mean, it's, what, what, one thing I love is that people will come to the show, like people, you know, proper Italian people, right from... Italy, you know, and they have no idea what we're saying in any of the songs <laughs> because it's all in these dialects that are so old. Uh, and to me, what I love about that is it levels the playing field for everyone. You know, it's like everyone is just in this moment where they're searching the music, they're searching for the meaning. And of course, I tell stories and things like that. But yeah, Stefano, to answer your question, it, the buy-in has been so cool and the support has been like more than I could have ever dreamed of. And I, I really owe it to just, I think, the realness of this music, something about the humanness, something about the human experience that we can all just relate to. Um, you know, it, this music expresses every facet of life. Would you, you know, Whether it's a lullaby, whether it's a funeral lament, whether it's a, a working in the field song, it's, you know, olive gathering, whether it's washing clothes i mean it's it's like they had a song for absolutely every single thing that they did it's, it was in, it's incredible a, a little bit of a primitive primordial i mean it's just that connection to mm. the first sounds the, the human nature uh, again something you you can't defy uh, you cannot fight you just have to kind of it, it wraps around you well i think and also to, to add yeah. to that and, and this is people see Italy and they think, oh, it's this beautiful country and all this great food. But th people forget there's a lot of sorrow and sadness in that history. Mm. And it's not that long ago. And it's no mm. different than you would say, like in the deep south, like a blues soul song. You know, to be honest, yeah. point, they're out in the field working. They're probably not happy, but they've got to do it to survive. And so, you know, from what I can hear from your music, and again, I'm, I'm not an expert. You're the expert. <laughs> it's your band, and it's and I, I like it. Okay. But I like how you guys seem to be capturing that. So, you know, mm. whatever you're doing, how are you doing it? How come that's working? Yeah, I I don't know. I I'm a pretty emotional person. You're Italian. <laughs> Oh, hello. <laughs> exactly. And you better be using your hands right now. <laughs> I am. I was. I was. When I said that particular phrase, emotional person, I was. my hands were jutting forward. Um, <laughs> I, I, I like to think that I'm sensitive to certain emotions and things like that. And I, I'm also like the type of person that likes to include people. Again, another it's like really Italian family trait, right? Like you come over and, oh God, it sounds so corny because of Olive Garden now, but like when you're here, you're family, <laughs> right? I mean, that's, that is literally, it's, it's too correct. You know, it's like people come over for a rehearsal or something and they have, they've got coffee, we got cookies. I'm like cutting up apples and cheese. And they're like, what the heck is this? This is like a, you know, but that's part of being Italian is like inviting people in your space, hosting people, and 
and listening to them and conversing and sharing these moments. And I think that to me is like the most fun part about this project for me is is inviting all these people in who might not have any idea what's going on or what to expect. Uh, and then just kind of like communing together in that moment. Mm -hmm. So just for those who are listening, again, we will have plenty of links, but if you have been listening to us now for six or seven weeks, that beautiful opening and closing music is again uh, by Alla Boara, and Anthony Tadeo is indeed the composer and uh, the creator of this band. And you should put on the calendar March 19th at 7 p.m. at Istituto Mendetaliano. You should go online right now at www.istitutomonditaliano.com <laughs> .org and get your tickets because we do have limited seatings and we have already started selling the tickets. So again, it's indeed one experience that you don't want to be missing. Who are you going to bring to Pittsburgh to us? Tell us a little bit about the individual members that will be joining you. Yeah, so we're going to be in our, our quartet form for this uh, Pittsburgh gig and we're going to have Ian Kinnaman on the bass. He's a wonderful bassist that also graduated with me at, at Youngstown State University, and he's been a part of the group since literally the very first composition. So it's, he's been along for the entire ride so far. And then Dan Bruce on guitars. Um, he is someone that just moved back to Cleveland from Chicago a few years ago, and he is just an incredible, incredible musician. Uh, and he's been one of my good friends since ever since he moved back. And then on vocals, the um, incomparable Miss Amanda Powell. She she's fantastic. She is like her, celestial yeah. voice. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, she's yeah, she's beyond amazing. She was a frequent vocal. Uh, sorry, re, uh, a frequent soloist. There we go with Apollo's Fire, mm -hmm. which is like a Baroque orchestra that's gotten a pretty big following over the years they've won a grammy actually so she's got she can go anywhere that's the my favorite thing about amanda is in the moment she can literally just go anywhere and the what what she does with an audience is just unbelievable so you know what it's Anthony, a pretty great uh, Vivian, step on, let me add I've been, I've been back listening and enjoying the conversation but to you know kind of build on what anthony was saying that evening down in tremont the event was catered by Gallucci's, which is one of the biggest. They're, they're kind of like Cleveland's Penn Mac, if you will, okay? And so we, we, we went to a table where there was chivo and lots of it, and we ate, and there was wine, and we felt that family. We felt that Sundayness there. Mm -hmm. And then when uh, the music started, it was time to <clears throat> sit back and enjoy. And it's a return to things that... Have, that are slowly beginning to disappear in our society. Mm. So that's why Ala Boara, that's why what Anthony Tadeo does is so important. It, it, it's relevant. It's not irrelevant. It's completely relevant. There's been this move toward trying to find the roots. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and, uh, and I, I think there's no better way, and I'm saying this to the listeners, uh, you know, there in the Pittsburgh area and you know, surrounding area, metropolitan area, you have not had an opportunity to see uh, a band. This is not a polka band, okay? This, this is something that is, is way beyond that. It's, These are, mm -hmm. that's no slight to polka bands, get you. Uh, but this, this, this is a, a, a return to, uh, to a sort of a folklore um, environment that's, that's been missing, sadly missing, not only just in mm. real life, but, you know, through uh, the media, through television and radio. So, uh, I mean, I... I will attempt to see Anthony and his group as often as I can from here on well, in. Just we'll we'll, we'll wait for you, Tony. We'll wait for you. <laughs> and, I mean, it, it brings me back to a happy time in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, Domenica, mm -hmm. alla casa. Yes. And, alla uh, and then, you know, Istituto Mondo Italiano is always a very generous organization. And we are opening up the lines now because the first two callers will each get two tickets for the Alla Boara concert at Istituto Mondo Italiano on March 19th at 7 o'clock. The magic number to dial is 412 6262 one more time, 
6262. In the meanwhile, let's uh, just have a couple of extra minutes with uh, um, Anthony. Anthony, I got the biggest question is uh, I understand there might be a CD yeah. coming out. You want to tell us a little more about that? Absolutely. Yeah. So we are, the uh, release date has been a little uh, up and down because we've actually been, it's been for a good reason, though. We've been in talks with a record label. Um, so I can't say who it is, but it, it's a pretty big deal for us. So it's kind of up in the air when it's coming out, but it is coming out this year. Uh, the record, we recorded it last year. And it it just came out so beautifully. I'm, I can't even. Yes, I'm very excited about it. Um, it has all the ten songs that I mentioned that I wrote in uh, my graduate degree, um, and it features uh, a couple other people as well, like the great Jamie Haddad, who is a Cleveland percussionist that worked with Paul Simon for almost thirty years, and. Um, so he's on there, and then uh, an incredible accordionist makes an appearance, Mr. Michael Bergman Ward. So uh, it's it's going to be so fun. I cannot wait for you guys to hear it. We want to have autographed copies yeah, here. Yeah, going to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, without a doubt. Without We've got to build our. We also got to build up our uh, pictures with famous people. Uh, our, exactly. Our, I mean, Tony's got you know twenty years of pictures. We got, so we got to do, when you're here, we're going to take some pictures. But um, I've got a oh, curious question. Uh, the song that we demoed tonight will that be on the album? It will. Uh huh. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay, very good. Um, I have a little curiosity again. I was looking at some notes. It has nothing to do with, indeed, the uh, CD and everything. Is it true that at the age of five, you started to tap dance? <laughs> Whoa. Yes. Wait, why do you know that? <laughs> because I do my research when we I bring our, guests. We have our so sources. let me see tap dancing at five, piano at 10, and then uh, playing the drums at 13. Do I have a good chronology? Talk to my mom. What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine you. That, that would be that would be awesome. And just to let you know, we do have already f- uh, uh, fast callers. Very we already fast. given away the tickets to winners. Felix and uh, Glassport and Greg Monessen. We are so happy to have you bring a guest oh, because awesome. it will be uh, four of you total. So this was a lovely conversation. I think uh, we are getting close to our. Um, end on the show and uh, oh. so uh, unfortunately but again we'll resume this uh, conversation in about a month almost to the date so um, I just I have to say I usually say this expression Big Ben a detto stop and people that are from Pittsburgh have asked me what, what does uh, Ben the uh, football player has to do <laughs> with an Italian radio show and, it's, <laughs> and I say I'm going to explain it this is an old expression from a TV show in Italy from the 80s uh, called Portobello and Enzo Tortora was the, the, the conductor, the anchor man and had this big big band clock and when his show oh, was God. over he always said the big band had detto stop so <laughs> I, was, I was wondering the same thing but uh. um, so again we want to thank um, Tony Marotta and Tony Taddeo um, and the winners, congratulations. Again, if you didn't get to win the tickets, please go on to the Istituto Mondo Italiano website. The first tab will say Alla Buara Concert. Get tickets. It's definitely worthwhile. March the 19th. Okay, and uh, that is actually wonderful. Again, I want to thank you to uh, for being wonderful guests. We enjoyed it. I am looking forward to meeting you in a few weeks. So, uh, again, yeah. congratulations to our winners, Felix and Greg. And uh, Anthony, uh, again, any any last last thoughts? No, I just you know, be in touch with us. We love uh, getting to communicate with fans and getting to meet people. So you can find us on Instagram. You can find us on Facebook, uh, and we also have a, a single from the album available. You can find links on our website as well. So alabuada.com. That's all you need. And you can get in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you. Awesome. Thanks again, Anthony. We appreciate it. And Tony, thanks again for being a wonderful guest. Thank um, you for having me. And when I'm up in Cleveland, I'm going to look you up. So uh, I appreciate that. I look for our, to it. Uh, all right. For our listeners, it's uh, time for us to say our arrivederci and alla prossima. Again, we want to thank you for listening. And uh, as a reminder, again, if you've kind of been listening to us for a while, 
You get the purpose of the show is we want to hear your story. We want to hear about your family, your roots, your journey. We want to know all about your connections. You don't have to be Italian, you know, but obviously there's got to be some connection to Italian in there somehow. So, you know, email us at the Italian Radio Hour at gmail.com. Or if you want to sponsor an episode, again, if you believe and like what we're doing <clears throat> and you'd like to sponsor us, please email us at the Italian Radio Hour at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Viviana, before we leave, who is our next guest next week? Well, next week, uh, next week we will have another guest that we have been waiting to talk to for uh, quite some time. Um, her name is Karen Hayde. She's the writer of two wonderful books, Calabria, the Other Italy, and Basilicata, Authentic Italy. Um, this was also the author that we talked and mentioned uh, during our conversation wow. with San Paddy and uh, Calabria. The best way, you know, this, uh, um, especially if you're planning a trip to Calabria, Karen Hayes' books, um, a book will definitely be a nice um, way of preparing for that trip. You know, the, the funny thing, though, is I'm seeing a lot more Calabria showing up in books. And, and I mean, people are always looking at Italy, look at the traditional place, you know, Tuscany, Roma, but Calabria is showing up more and more. And uh, so, again, for a reminder, um, for those who have, uh, might have missed today's um, episode, you can visit our website, www.istitutomondoitaliano.org, and you can click on the tab, the Italian Radio Hour. You will find all the episodes that have, been, uh, that have aired so far. Uh, vorrei ringraziare di nuovo i nostri ospiti, Tony Marotta, Anthony Taddeo, our sponsor, Istituto Mondo Italiano, Rizzo's Malabar Inn, and Alla Boara for the music. And finally, before we leave, here is our next trivia for the, uh, for the week. What does essere al verde or rimanere al verde mean? Okay, one more time. What does essere al verde mean? Be the first one to answer correctly and send us an email at theitalianradiohour at gmail.com. Vi ringraziamo per la risposta from last week's trivia. As always, we enjoy reading your emails, and we do read your emails, so please keep them coming. If you are not in the Pittsburgh area or might be traveling, remember, you can catch us streaming live at khbradio.com every Thursday at 5 p.m., and be sure to like us on Instagram and Facebook at the Italian Radio Hour. Until next time, alla prossima! Ciao, ciao! The Italian Radio Hour has been sponsored by Istituto Mondo Italiano.